It's the Rap Radar Podcast. My name is B Dot. Elliot Wilson. Elliot, you have an interview with the vampire hunter? Ooh. Hey, <laughs> two and, of them and two superstars, man. Yes, Jamie Foxx and Snoop Dogg. Uh, what up, Rap Radar Podcast in the house like furniture, down like gravity. That's Hello, a, you know how we doing? That's a fact. You guys collaborated before, but never on the movie The Day Shift. Why was now the right time to do this? Man, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like I'm knowing this brother, man, since VIP Records time, Long Beach, California, yes, like yes. more than Jeez, a couple right. of dec- decades. West West, uh, and I remember. Being like the comedian, just trying to get on, whatever, but I would just be hanging out and watching these guys in the back room of VIP Rex. Dude had an SP 1200 making beats. Mm. And I would just watch <laughs> them rapping. I said, I don't know about, I don't know about them niggas right there, but that one right there about to be the future. Mm-hmm. And then we got a chance to sort of watch it all play out. I watched him, uh, Murder Was a Case, uh, this the soundtrack, <laughs> and I remember running into him at a, mm-hmm. uh, at a party. I said, man, you did. He said, he said, like JJ said, what can I say? <laughs> Good to have said. Yeah, yeah. And so we just we we've had a, a real relationship. And I'll be honest with you, like being in Hollywood, you know, it's funky and yeah. and, and two-faced and and plastic and goofy as shit. So I stay way out from mm-hmm. and it's only a couple of people that I actually call for more than just doing this. And yeah. that's and Snoop is one of them. So when this movie came about, Day Shift, which is blowing the fuck up, like yeah, yeah. everybody's waiting on this. The director was like, we were trying to find the cast. He said, man, hey man, I really love Snoop Dogg. I said, nigga, say less. <laughs> get him right, get him. I said, right on the phone, boom, boom, boom. And the next thing you know, man, he jumps into this role, man, and it's a different Snoop. Like that's yeah. what people are really responding to. Like I got a chance to watch it with the crowd watching this movie. Yeah. And so when they see Snoop whooping ass <laughs> and and being a, a real legitimate action hero, yeah. it was going yeah. crazy. What's it like to whoop ass on screen for this for this role? Man, hey, shit Jay. Was, it was challenging because I had to do a lot of like preparation, a lot of like working out and mm-hmm. going to 8711, 8711, shout out to them. Because yeah. they really worked with me to get me right, because I was kind of like I'm an athlete, but at the same time, I never done this. I always had stunt doubles, but I mm. wanted to like really like mm. do my own shit. Mm. I didn't really want to have a stunt double. I wanted him to do like minimum work, so I had to put in all of that work and showing up and carrying this big ass fucking gun. That <laughs> motherfucker, <big, laughs> that motherfucker heavy fuck. Weighed right? about 150 pounds. Yeah. Nigga, that shit damn near heavier than me. <laughs> and I had to like hold it to where it didn't look like my posture yeah. was off. And then even when it was time to act. I was on screen with Jamie, so yeah. this is my dog, and yeah. I get to play a character where it's not Snoop Dogg, mm-hmm. it's Big John, it's a real character. So I got a chance to get with the director, and he gave me a lot of intel on who Big John was. To me, Big John was JJ, the director. Right. Mm. It was it was him. It was me playing him because mm. he was a vet. He had been overseas and fought in the war, came back, and some of the elements of my character was him. So it was fun being able to be directed by somebody like JJ and to work with my buddy. Dope. Now, Jamie, you've played a football player, a super villain, now a cowboy. Come on, now. Now you're a vampire hunter. Do you Come always want to do this like action horror I, kind I, of? I'm going to be honest with you, piggybacking on what he's saying. J.J. Perry, for those of you who don't know, J.J. Perry is the director who directed all of the second unit on Fast and the Furious, mm-hmm. on uh, John Wick, Django. So he directed all of those like high octane you know, scenes that you that you see. Yeah. Action, uh, action. So this was his debut. Oh, okay. So it wasn't necessarily mm-hmm. about just the vehicle of hunting vampires, it was the action that he showed me. He showed me these prevades where, and if you see it, like 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 even on the trailer, I'm fighting this uh, this grandmother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like on the trailer, like you see me blow this white grandmother <laughs> through, a motherfucking, <laughs> through the motherfucking bathroom. Yeah. The back Niggas didn't even watch the whole trailer. They called me, yo nigga, you shooting grandmothers back now? I said, nah man, you seen this white bitch just go through? I said, no man, hold on, easy, easy, easy. I said, watch the whole trailer. Yeah. But what was great about it was it was practical. So these are like yeah. 60 guys that are parkour guys mm-hmm. and girls. And you know they were amazing. So that's why we jumped into it. And in the space of vampires, man, everybody loves that. You got to understand like yeah. when the, uh, the zombie or the vampire world and this guy says, when we go into this world, we're going to make it practical. Like we're going to be union guys, fangs mm-hmm. for money. Yeah. That's something that we understand. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And at the same time, you know, you got Big John as your is your, is your guy. So all of those elements put together, man, turned out something really, really special for Netflix. Yeah, because you, you, what I like about you, Jamie, you make call like you see it. Like 
You'll talk about movies that did well. You'll talk yeah, about movies that didn't do for well. Sure, for like, sure. how do you, how, like, how do you know? Did you, was there a moment shooting this where you felt like, oh, this is, this feels like something. I think this might the, be one of those ones. I think the very beginning before we even get, get into it. And I always have to be careful sometimes when I'm talking about, you know, the movies that I've done, I didn't think was good because those are directors and writers that, you know, put mm-hmm. they, you know, yeah. put they blood, sweat and tears into it. But sometimes I got to just be honest. I said, I put it on me. It's my bad, my bad choice. Yeah. But this is a great choice because you got those great elements, man. Mm-hmm. And when we start shooting this and I see Snoop like handling his shit and then handling that gun and then looking at the pre of what we just shot, I said, oh, we, <laughs> we, we yeah. out of here. Especially for, I said, for a, a platform like Netflix, which mm. is gore, horror, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. a little off center and things like that. And the way it absolutely launches at the beginning, it's, it was a good mix. And speaking about in the beginning, one thing that stood out to me is the music. When you yeah. the opening scene, you have oh, California man. Love remix yeah. there. You got Check Yourself or Ice Cube, you that's, know, that's, Nipsey that's, Hustle grinding all my life. Right it's here. an LA movie, man. Yeah. So it's like, if the scene is LA, Calabasas, you know, LA, you gotta have LA music. What would you listen to? In this environment, and vampires like gangster shit too. <laughs> <laughs> That's the T-shirt right there. <laughs> how challenging was the action for you, Jamie? Like Snoop said, he had to get in shape. Like, do you do a lot of your stuff, or do you? How do you use stunt doubles? Like, how's it work for you? On this one, man, like we were all, all, all in. You know, like myself, Snoop, Dave Franco, and what was great is, is that dude is so great at what he does. Is when we jumped in and did what we needed to do, it wasn't, it wasn't as taxing as say someone who doesn't shoot action. Like, so you'll have a director mm-hmm. that, that knows the movie, but he don't shoot action, so mm-hmm. you, it's laborious. You be like, sometimes, mm-hmm. I, be like, man, I ain't gonna get in there, man, because you don't know you know what's going on. We felt really safe doing it. We weren't gonna get injured, nothing like that. And then being involved in it, when you see the, st- see the stunts, it's seamless. You can't tell yeah. who the stunt person is and who ain't. So, you know, those, and those are some big, you know, hey, big You know them niggas things. fucked me up one day, Jamie, when we was in uh, Atlanta. I got to the set, and um, normally I get to the set just before we shoot. I do a little workout, training with the guns and stunts and all of this shit with the boxes and the carpet so a nigga don't get hurt. So mm-hmm. we doing this shit for like three days, and all of a sudden JJ say something to me. I wasn't even listening to him. So I finished the workout. Some nigga come that's buff as a motherfucker <laughs> with a bunch of dumbbells and ropes and shit. <laughs> I'm like, I'm done. He like, no, you're not. This is the second part of the workout. Yeah. You got to lift to do this and nigga was doing <laughs> yoga and heavy and downward, downward dog. And, and then we come, what the fuck do this got to do with the road, right. guys? But then once we start shooting, all that shit matter. Yeah. It really yeah. fucking matters. It's like a, an athlete that trains to be an athlete. You don't understand why he lift and squatting and running and training, but when the bus to get him a touchdown, you like all that training and preparation. I see that when, when this movie is complete as far as like how I put in that work on that extra work. And I, I want to thank JJ again for putting me through that shit because mm-hmm. as an actor, we don't understand how deep it is. We just think as a celebrity, I can mm-hmm. just jump on screen, yeah. mm-hmm. knock the roll out because I'm the shit. No, nah, it takes a lot of preparation and skill and training. and. If you want to be great, right. that's if you want to be great. So thank you, JJ, for pushing me to greatness. Yeah. And Jamie, yeah. you work well with rappers, man. In the past, LL Cool J, yeah. Ice Cube, of course, mostly. Snoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mostly. <laughs> that's like the fame fight, me and LL go there. But yeah, man, I, you know what? It's but, but it's that's all organic. And what's great is. I'm fans of these guys, mm, man. He'll yeah. tell you, man. I'll be on, cl- I'll be on cloud nine, man. That nigga come in so, with a big ass boombox. Yeah, man. <laughs> but, you Bang. Know, I always been my boombox. I play the music, yeah, even when it was LL or any of these guys, man. It's just it, it's a, it's the cross pollination of. But your what house, we do. though, Jamie, your house was like the epicenter yeah. to the West Coast and to everybody yeah. who loved music and loved what we stood yeah. for. So I remember one time when the NBA shut down and it was no season or something had happened. This nigga had all the players at his house yeah. playing basketball. Yeah. It was a party and it wow. was a, mm. like, it was just like yeah. Jamie's house was the spot. Yeah. Like the NBA had shut down. Like, yeah, nigga, we ain't playing. Oh, this is like in the, they, they had the news. lockout, right? Oh, the lockout. So we, did a, yeah. we did a charity for this boy's home. Yeah. James Harden, all the niggas everybody was there, man. Niggas. And then him, him and Wiz, Wiz. Yeah. They, did y'all have a battle in the, uh, yeah, in the studio? Did. They had a little smoke wow. battle. A little smoke battle. That's when I put him out. on. I put him on. He got put on that day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and to be honest with you, to piggyback on that, the party, we did the first verses. I don't know if you recognize mm. this. We was at, it was the BET party, yes. right? Yeah. Okay. So it, nobody scheduled to perform or nothing like that, but we just had a stage. Mm-hmm. Where, and so the DJ just started playing 
you know, Snoop's music. Next thing you know, Snoop hit it. And then Timbaland walked in. Nigga, play Timbaland. Boom, and played his. And everybody was sort of trading off. You remember yeah, that? that Trade off. And then, to be fun. honest with you, like 3,000 in the backyard, 3,000 mm. people in the backyard. Remember when Ye came in? Kanye. Yeah. Kanye walked in, that shit was weird. <laughs> it was weird because everybody like gravitated that because yeah. you don't ever see yeah. Ye out. It was like, that nigga like God when he walked yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a unicorn moment. crazy is that motherfucker is niggas be like, he's yeah. here. Man, that motherfucker walked in and I was like, you good? Uh, yeah. Uh, they start playing it. So to your question, mm -hmm. yeah. It's imperative that we all work together. Yes. When you sit and you talk to Quincy Jones yes. and Quincy, like, man, shit, like working with Ray Charles, man. You know Frank Sinatra, baby. You know when I worked with Usher, you know Usher, don't you, Jamie? Yeah, man, Michael Jackson, man. We did fifty-four million records right there on the wall, man. So fifty-four million records. Do you know Usher? Everybody <laughs> always hit me. Everybody always ask me them. Good. You know Usher, right, Snoop? Yes, I love Snoop Dio Double Man. He's amazing. Man. You know, I smoked with him one time and got lost. I couldn't get home. Man, it's crazy. But so, but with Quincy, he would break down how they all kicked it together. So the community, you build so, community. So, so, yeah. so, so like we want that. We want to yeah, do that same want, thing. We want to replicate thing. greatness, yeah, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, Jamie, you're from Texas, right? Talking yeah. about what are some of your early hip hop origins like? Where do you grow up? What did you grow up listening to? Man, it was NWA. It, mm -hmm. The reason it was NWA because I was in Texas. Mm -hmm. We weren't quite East Coast yet because you know Texas is kind of country thing mm -hmm. like that, and so LA looked to us different. Like you know, the lifestyle. The the my cousins was from Inglewood. They was mm -hmm. light skinned and, shit, <laughs> and talk different. And all shit. our cousins was from down south. Yeah, but uh, you know what I'm saying. So we so yeah. the south was really like Ellie. But all my cousins, like my light skinned cousins, that, that talk different. I remember they would say the word P O O L. Mm -hmm. We say pool, yeah. but they would say pool. I said, damn, that's <laughs> two different like vowels. And yeah. so we was enamored with L A. So when N W A hit, I was like. What is this? Mm -hmm. You know, here's a little story about a nigga like me. Never should have been let out the penitentiary. Ice Cube would like to say that I'm a crazy motherfucker from around the mm -hmm. way. Since I was a youth, <laughs> I smoked weed out. Now <laughs> I'm the motherfucker that you read about. Taking the life or two, that's what the hell I do. You, you don't, don't like, like how I'm living? living. Well, fuck you. you. I said, who is this nigga? <laughs> <laughs> so I get to LA, I hope I don't run into him. This motherfucker is dangerous, you know what I'm saying? And then the girls, and the lights out, and of course, you know, then getting to, to LA and then and, and, and Snoop, I had more than just hearing the music. Wow. Mm. I was actually there watching these guys yeah. make these moments happen. Yeah. So that's why I was like more like uh, West Coast, you know what I'm saying? But even your, your your transition to making music, right? You know, being the great com comic comedian, like put out Pete this in 94, yeah, yeah, didn't get the great result, yeah, you didn't yeah. want it. 11 years later, you're like officially in this music business and really kicking ass. I mean, Unpredictable was amazing yeah. body of work. That was my boy, Breon, Breon Prescott. Shout out to Breon. Breon brought, Breon would always come to me and say, yo, boy, you got to do music, but you got to stop being funny. That's mm -hmm. what you mean. He said, you got to find like real songs and stop joking your shit away. He right. said, because people see you as a, as a comic. So we working on the music. And the next thing you know, he brought a dude over with a backpack on, jaw busted. It was mm -hmm. Kanye to right my up. crib. And Kanye didn't have a deal. It was another party. Mm -hmm. Has to be a party. It was a game. party, <laughs> but, the, but the party was so puff and Missy Ellie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude standing on the wall that nobody knew with a little tracksuit jacket on his Jay Z. I said, "What's up? Nice party. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's like this all the time. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's started off in Mossy Projects. <laughs> Dame had an idea. You know, with all that shit. Right? At that time, at that time, tall dude, smaller dude. It was Pharrell. Yep. Mm. Hanging, and when they brought Ye over, people they showed a, uh, they showed a. The documentary, oh, the Netflix, yeah. 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 but they don't. But they don't show the, the depth. beginning, the depth. When they came in, it was people that come to my house, man. Everybody had to perform. Mm -hmm. It was all like you know sharpening our, yeah. you know our, our talent. Yeah. That was that little studio you yeah, had. Yeah, that little ass studio. Yeah. So I said, when I see Yay, I said, hey man, you got a rap, man. They told me you rap. This nigga, this nigga did a freestyle. Mm -hmm. It was so incredible. Niggas start, you know how niggas be running. Oh, mm -hmm. shit, great. You know, that's when he said, I got a record for you. Mm -hmm. And it was Slow Jam. Right. Yeah. And uh, at that time, he was, you know, he was still trying to get a deal or whatever. And then that's how I got into music. Yeah. Because it was a long enough time that the people that were watching me on The Living Color mm -hmm. were far removed. They had got grown. Yeah. So the younger kids only saw me as the music dude. And I wasn't. 
Yeah. Sort of not joking. Touching on a living color, I felt like you could correct me if I'm wrong. It was like a watershed moment. There was like a Christmas episode yeah. where you sung. Yeah, yeah. Did that moment give you the confidence to like put your music out there to the world? Yeah, man. Because I was like, because because at that time, you know, they you couldn't do music and comedy on, but but uh, uh, the winds. I don't know if they was with it or not at that time, but I was like, man, let me just sing a little something, you know, because they were kind of like, we want to protect the comedy, but you know, that gave me a little, you know. Right. Boost. Well, on the Living Color, do you remember this sketch where you impersonated Snoop? It was the gangster group sketch. Yeah. <laughs> Snoop, do you remember I that? I think so. <laughs> David Aguilar where was Bushwick Bill, Tommy <laughs> Davidson was uh, Nigga, Tupac, <laughs> and it was like, you know, just talking about the, the state of hip hop well, at the I time. I love that show. That show yeah. was one of the greatest shows that ever hit TV, sketch comedy. They even transitioned into more music. Like, I feel like a lot of people give you credit for slow jams, you know, with twists and stuff like that, but. You worked with Guru in common on the Any Given yeah. Sunday soundtrack, right? Was that like your first time getting like a big look? Yeah, I, I, here, here's the history. Every time I do a movie, I do a song, whether the song come out or not. Like <laughs> I did Spider Man. I did yeah. I did a song for Electro called Chasing Spiders. Uh, I did a song on Any Given Sunday. I came up with the chant. My my name is Willie Willie Beam, right? Mm -hmm. But then I'm sitting in my little uh, apartment in Miami, and came up with a. The the theme song for any given Sunday. I said the only. I said this this feels like Common and Guru, but they mm. didn't know each other. They had never met mm. each other. So I just went out on the limb. You got to think about how long ago this was. It's twenty three years ago. It's ninety nine. Mm. Yeah. So I called Guru. I said, man, I'm just reaching out to you. I'm gonna send you the song. You know, I had to. Send, it wasn't like. I had to send the, 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 the CD, you know what I'm saying? Like, nigga had to listen to the CD, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It wasn't no, just, you know, it wasn't no air drop. Three, three, air 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 drop. Had to, nigga, look, nigga had to, it up. I had to lock that shit and hermetically seal that motherfucker <laughs> so he could get it, right? So then we in Toronto, I flew them to Toronto, and Common walks in and Common, oh God, I didn't even know that you like. <laughs> Like, what's on me like that? This is like special, you know? Like, I said, yeah, nigga. So they ended up laying it out. And that's how uh, the soundtrack for uh, any, any Given Sunday got done. And then on this, we got some music coming for this. Uh-oh. Mm, yeah. What we, you got? we got this one called Mowing Down Vamps with my best friend, Bug, which is what he says at the end of the movie. Yeah. So we shot a little video of that. And got some other musical things that are happening throughout the month. Because we want to keep people excited about the movie for the next 30 days. But even that era, that 05 era, like Snoop, you was kicking ass with Pharrell making music. What was it like seeing Jamie kind of step out and really being taken seriously as a musician? I mean, I already knew the nigga could sing. Mm -hmm. Like, like Breon said, he should have been starred keeping it one thigh while separating the comedy from the singing because sometimes when he would do his comedy and sing, motherfuckers would get mad that he wouldn't sing the whole song. Mm -hmm. So that was like signs of it. And then to see him actually have great records that were dope. And then I remember I was on my last song on my album. This nigga called me <laughs> and nigga said, nigga, you can't put your album out without putting one of my songs on it. Yeah. And I pulled up on you. Remember I pulled yeah. up and you gave me that uh, pss, pss, on blue carpet treatment. Yeah, yeah. 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 throw a dollar. Yeah. 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 He made he forced himself on yeah. that album. Like, yeah. nigga, I'm hot now. Nigga. Yeah. 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 Take this song, nigga. Yeah. 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 What was that era like? Like that mid two thousands. You were like the go to guy for a lot of artists. I don't really. I mean, it was just happening so fast. That song that we did, we nigga, we literally. He ain't telling you the whole story. He showed up. It was a Christmas. <laughs> It was it was December twenty fourth. My buzz ring. I look at my monitor and it's a, a, a Santa blue Santa Claus hat with some light going. I said I said what's up? Hey, what's happening, guy? I said oh, Snoop. So that so it's Christmas Eve. We ain't got shit to do. And remember you had your dude. That was rolling blunts. Yeah, it was just rolling blunts. He was just he didn't even he didn't he didn't, he didn't even that. talk. He just <laughs> like he got his job. He was rolling up and yeah. he rolled that shit like law. So you know I can't smoke like this much. So yeah. we trying to smoke. I said nigga, I we in the studio. Going crazy, then we hooped. Mm -hmm. We hooped that night, Got and then we did it. a song, and then we forgot about the motherfucker because mm. I was high as shit. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, a few weeks later, I went back, went through my went through my shit, and I said, "Oh, nigga, we did a song." And then that's how I. Yeah, you also did a record called uh, "With You" on Unpredictable on your project too. Did yeah. that come first, or did the? Uh, I don't. I'm not for sure, man. Okay. It was all a haze, but <laughs> but it it was just a good time. It was a, a really, really, really great time, man. Oh, and and this nigga lived far as fuck, so yeah, the dude. that nigga house is like nigga <laughs> driving to go see the Waltons, nigga. Yeah. I'm passing all kinds. Of Where this nigga live, God? God damn! But everybody wanted a piece of you, Jamie. You had uh, Fifty Cent build you up. You want to massacre? 
That was like yeah. his big biggest selling debut at the time. Yeah, yeah. And then like Ludacris, you were in Georgia. You wasn't in the video. Cadillac right? Grill. <laughs> Check out all of this is is because I, I champion their talents. Like mm-hmm. I just I just yeah. want them to win. Mm-hmm. And when I see Snoop, yeah. just just staying focused on Snoop, like like when I see Snoop, I see everything. Y'all talk about how y'all see Snoop everywhere mm-hmm. is because Snoop is the quintessential everything. Mm-hmm. Like for him to be able to cross pollinate markets all over the world a, a, an, an incredible figure coming from where he came from and looking at his his struggle there used to be days when me and Snoop was like nigga some bad shit could really happen right now mm-hmm. so we need to walk yeah. precisely because yeah. you know at that time it was fun yeah but that shit was dangerous as a motherfucker <laughs> and I think that's why the music yeah. what he did was mm-hmm. so amazing because sometimes we was Nigga, really, really running for his life. So now yeah. you see, you see him blooming because that came from some real dirt. If that makes sense. How how uh, proud of you are you of you are? Excuse me. How proud of you are you of your your it, album? It's the you weed. Know, it's the weed. It's the weed. Right. <laughs> it's still got me high. He, he curated one of my. He curated my book too. I forgot what I was talking about. All secondhand smoke. It's a secondhand smoke. Secondhand but smoke. like listening to your catalog, like unpredictable intuition, like those joints have some bangers on there, man. Like how proud are you of those projects? It was great because we had, like I said, Breon was at the helm. We had people like Rico Love. We had all these. We had people like Tank. We had some really mm. great like R and B guys that were uh, uh, floor tree. You know yeah. What I mean? Uh, you know, everyone loves slow jams with Twister, yeah. but I feel like DJ play a love song doesn't yeah, get man. enough oh, props, man. man. It, it, it do, though. When I be out there on the, yeah. on the live, yeah. I play it. But uh, that was uh, Sean Garrett. Do mm. you do that other song without like, uh, I had one too, too many, many drinks. drinks? That's like the precursor. I the at the embassy, embassy. Yeah. but this pretty little thing from Memphis, Memphis Tennessee. Tennessee. It was, it was a, a one night extravaganza. <laughs> yeah, that was a hey, close cool my man's I name. I woke up with <laughs> yeah. baby that's what laying Kanye. next to me. Yeah. Oh, that's my shit yeah. right there. How, yeah. t- how tough it is to have a record called Blame It On Alcohol at the height of things? Like, <laughs> how many drinks did you have to turn down? What was the situation you at the club? <laughs> well, I mean, Blame It On Alcohol was, 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 a, was a crazy hit, but it was like um, the, way we, the way we got that record was through Breon. He called me like four in the morning, wake your ass up. Mm. So it's wake your ass up. They got a missile. Oh, you got a missile down here. <laughs> got a missile down here. We got to come in right now. So I go to Sunset it. Marquee. And so they listen to the music, but the dudes don't know that that's a hit. So Brian, like, yo, let me get that, that one record. That, that one record kind of whack. Let me get that. And then he go, he said, you got to cut the record right now. We mm. cut the record. And then when it came out, we literally took it to, from this is where the jokes came in handy. We went from Toronto, New York, and every time we go in a club, we went, shout out to my man Peckus. He took oh, us to uh, si- he took Peckus. us to Sin City. Okay, wow. In the Bronx. Okay. Yo, Jamie, you gotta come to Sin City, baby. <laughs> you talking all that good shit? We gotta see if it play in here. If it don't play in here, it don't play nowhere. Get, no, get him. Get us back. Yo, yo, mommy, mommy, move. Let them through. Let them through. Establishment. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we in Sin City. So I'm, I don't know if I'm being, you know. No, no, no. So I'm saying, but we in Sin City. I think it's going too, right? R. Yes, R. I. P. Yeah. 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 Well, it was, it was, it was Sin City, and basically what he was explaining to me that the way he break the record is mm-hmm. if they dance to it in dance here, they're dancing yeah. anyway. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I jumped on the mic. I said, fellas. You ever meet a girl and you think she Halle Berry, but you get through drinking and you wake up in the morning, she Halle Scary, blame it on the girl. <laughs> <laughs> so we was joking it now. Yeah. So you lost the record in Sin City? We, we yeah. lost that record wow. in Sin City, yeah. New York, DC, mm. uh, inauguration. Yeah. Kathy, Kathy Hughes, God bless, yeah. says sing that record. And then by the time we got to Miami, it was. It was a wrap. And you also launched this guy named Drake, man. Like yeah. he, you gave him his first big TV appearance yeah, yeah. when you uh on the Conan O'Brien show, yeah, Digital yeah. Girl. What was that experience like? Because it's so surreal watching you talk about the greatness of Drake tw- you know, 12 years ago. Well, yeah. I mean, it was it was uh, uh great because I, I was on Conan O'Brien. I said, Conan, I'm about to bring this young kid out. His name is Drake. One girl clap. <laughs> and I said, fan. and I said, I said that girl knows the future, mm-hmm. and he came out and did his thing, and then yeah. the, the rest. But he said it's not even on the internet, right? Nah, it's you can't even find that footage. footage. Find. No, no, but it, but that that was a real deal. But I said his name is Drake, and I think what they did with the footage was is that we had ran out of time when I was explaining it. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, one girl clap, and I said, yeah, it's about to be. 
crazy. Because he, he always talked about how, I remember Drake always talked about how your, your comedy special, the Mike Meeks Cure, was such an influence to him yeah. as, a young, as a young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and then that's the thing. Sometimes I had to, my, my daughter don't think I'm always cool. <laughs> Reminder. You know what I'm saying? Reminder. Yeah, my, my, I, I said, so she's like, mm. so I just let her, re, I let her read text from Drake. Look. <laughs> Drake says, he's he followed me. <laughs> Whatever, dad. <laughs> you screenshot that shit. <laughs> and how did that like evolve that. from like, you guys recording full for your type? That's like a classic. Uh, it was just, I mean, a record that he wrote and said, you know, I'm going to do some R&B stuff for you. And, you know, he was uh, generous enough to let me cut the record because he had already, you know, had had the record out. And then once we did it, man, you know, he was just, you know, support. Like I said, it's always, yeah. mm. you know, just love. giving support. Love. Right. Yeah. Snoop, you showing love to the newer generation, too. Um, on your latest project, I was surprised to hear you say that you let Corday write for you on one of your songs. Like, yeah. Like, you... You know, it's so so taboo to talk about people writing for others, but nah. You know, but I, I started off writing. I started off writing for Dr. Dre. So yeah. what would I be if I didn't allow somebody to write for me? Mm. You know, sometimes you got to put yourself in the frame of uh, letting somebody else depict a better picture for you because you can't see everything. Mm. I use this as an example all the time. I feel like Whitney Houston's best record was The Bodyguard, mm. when other people came in and gave her records that weren't hers, where she just could just sit back and just sing and they embody mm. what they thought she should be. And that's to the point of my career where I'm at now, to where I've written so many hit records to where it's not about what I can write. Sometimes it's about what I can't see that somebody else can write for me. Mm. Yeah. Right. Snoopy mentioned Dre, man. We've seen a lot of you guys in the studio, man. Do we have our fingers crossed that mm. that, could, that could maybe happen one day? Uh, Uncross complete? them. <laughs> Uncross them. Mm -hmm. Uncross your fingers. Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre? Yeah, but I can't say much, but yeah. it's, it's happening. Wow. I got the whole record right here on me. What's happening? What about the reunion with you and uh, Death Row uh, founder Harry O? Like, you guys reconnected. Like, how has that experience been? I mean, it's been beautiful. Actually, um, Trump pardoned him. Mm -hmm. We were speaking There's on a lot of great people him. on both sides. A lot of great people <laughs> on both sides. I know Harry O, he's a great person. He couldn't vote for me at the time. Now he can vote for me once he gets out. I love Snoop Deal, Double G, great person. So do you love Death Row Records? I love People Death Row. Sides. I love Death Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Fake news. I love Death Row. What's your favorite Death Row record, uh, Mr. Trump? All of them. <laughs> All of the Death Row records. Don't try to pin me down. Let's see what he just, excuse me. Fake news. Excuse me. Fake news. Fake news. <laughs> Out for they tried to give me the virus. <laughs> <laughs> I beat the virus. Why is that they tried to, they, they to give me the virus? Like, who is they? Then the motherfucker said, I beat the virus. They were like, fuck you! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> He's leading! <laughs> oh, <laughs> he looked out, though. He got the homie out. Yep. When he got him out, <laughs> I didn't have death row at the time. Mm. So... What I was doing was trying to figure out how to get my masters back, mm -hmm. which was the key. Mm -hmm. um, and then the label became available first. Mm -hmm. It was more feasible. Mm -hmm. So I snatched the label up and then I went after my masters and then I went after the publishing. And then I went to him and said, I want to make you the CEO of Death Row mm -hmm. so we can handle this unfinished business and put you in a position to where you can make moves and make this label grow like it should have grown and tie you back into something that you created. Mm. And then at the same time, go back, take care of all of the old artists like Rage, RBX, Daz, Corrupt, mm -hmm. all the people who didn't get their publishing or didn't get things that were supposed to be given to them, making sure that we lining it up now and making sure those numbers are accurate as opposed to what they were. Right. Well, Come on, we gotta take yeah, a moment. Yeah, absolutely. How important does that feel? Just make, like making things right, right? Like just, just getting it back to what it should have been. <clears> yeah, it started, right. about, it, it started off about me. I wanted to get me right. I wanted to get my masters because I'm like, I need to have doggy style. Fuck that. That's mm. my record. Yeah. And then it went to stop being selfish. What about everybody else? So then it went into let me get this first. Then I'll get that. But I'm not going to worry about mine. Get this. Make sure everybody else is straight. Restore order. Make death row presentable again. Respectable. Lovable. Yeah. People want to be around it. The music, mm. the mm -hmm. atmosphere, the whole energy of it all. And then begin my mission with Doggy Style because the 30th anniversary yeah. is next year. Yeah. You also saw a recent rap veteran running around talking about he was taking a meeting with you. Who, Mason? 
Mace, man. What's going on, Mason Beffer? He said he might be the first artist to be bad boy and then death row. <laughs> Mace is my family. You know, one thing about Snoop Dogg, I've always been the epicenter of peace and love. And when the bad boy death row was having issues, me and Mace never had issues. Mm -hmm. Me and Puffy never had issues. Me and Biggie never had issues. So it was like I was always the fine line. And, and, and we in a new world, a new era now. We got to put a different spin on what death row and bad boy was as opposed to what it is. Puffy kids and my kids are best of friends. Mm -hmm. They came up together. Like, I didn't ha make it happen. I didn't force them to hang. Kim put them together one day when they were seven, eight years old, and they became best of friends. Mm -hmm. So it's like, they don't see the bad boy death row beef. They see bad boy death row love. Mm -hmm. So why shouldn't we project that and c continue that energy moving forward as opposed to keeping that negative shit in the air? Mm -hmm. Ooh, what was that mean, like, base life, though? With who? With Mace. So you I ain't met with him yet. He's, he yet? Oh, he's nah. capping? <laughs> nah, he's he not capping. He's speaking some real shit. You got to yeah. put it in the air. You got to speak got you, got you. in existence. Like, got manifestation you. is key. Like, he's speaking to something that's got real. You. Like, yeah. I'm here to entertain it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I'm here to entertain it. Mace, where you at? <laughs> Pull up on the door. Word. Now, Jim, you also entertain a lot of rappers on the Jamie Foxx show. You had yeah. West Side Connection. Oh, that was crazy. Met the man, <laughs> red man. That was crazy. What was so crazy about that moment? When we had West Coast Connect, Ice Cube, Dub, Mac 10. and, and uh, Mac 10, yeah. the writers at that time, we they weren't quite getting it right. So I would never go to my 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 office. I always slept on the set because I would rewrite wow, the I would wow, rewrite the show wow. in the mornings. Wow. I said, nah. I said, when they walked in, and it, you know, you gotta understand, Cube. I, Cube is a nice person, but it don't always no, no, it don't, don't always like translate with. with his facial expression. <laughs> yeah. like, so like my, you know, that eyebrow. What, what's up, Cube? What's up? It's like, oh shit! So you know, some of some of the people that work there, it's like, are they okay? Should be. I said, just relax. But I think that energy that they came in, this is how it should be. Dub, I said, when y'all when we ask for payment. You say you got cash, you don't carry no credit card, and just reaching your shit like that, and that's gonna start the whole episode. Mm. So when he did that, we was like, oh God, please don't set it off. <laughs> oh, Jesus God. And so to be able to have moments like this, I'll go back to my childhood when it was Sammy Davis Jr., Flip Wilson, Richard mm. Pryor, mm. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Rich Little, all of them would be doing uh, each other's shows and things like that. So I just wanted to be able to have that. In, in my legacy of working with all the rappers, Red Man, Method Man, we used to have a a, 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 a karaoke night every Tuesday when we shot. Mm. So I had Red Man and Method Man afterwards come to the karaoke Got night it. and then ended up in my crib and they running through the house throwing, because if one of them's birthday, they throwing birthday cakes and yeah. shit. <laughs> so it was those moments to where you go like, man, it's so surreal and so fun. You soak it up and then, uh, yeah, and then you reflect. You had a uh, Ron Isley and mm -hmm. Mary J. Blige on there too. Do the yeah. duet. He shared my world ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it was great. I mean, to have the queen of R and B soul, uh, and, and then the prince of R and B, and, and you got to think the history of, of Ron Isley's eyes is amazing. Ooh, yeah. Twist and shout, you know what I mean? 50s, from the 50s yeah, on, from every the 50s, decade, but before the 50s, mm -hmm. like early, early on. So it's like. That's when it's real cool. You get a chance to sort of rub up against like some of your heroes mm -hmm. and and uh, Mary J. Blige, man. I mean, just to you know, how what can what can you say about her? And I know one thing too. Don't don't perform behind Mary J. Blige mm -hmm. if she goes up first. Yeah, that's good. I problems. saw I saw her and Jay Z that tour when they was at yeah. a, a boy. <laughs> she was. Boy, it went to overtime. Yeah. <laughs> Jay-Z had to hit the free throw, you know what I mean? And you got to sink these. Right. I mean, she was Because all the women showed up, and she was yeah, like, yeah. boom, da, 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 I was like, shit, you know? Yeah. But, you know, so to see her on the show was amazing. The show's also influenced a young producer by the name of Pierre Bourne. Are you oh, familiar yeah. with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, he uses your line yeah, as his producer tag. Yeah, what do you yeah. think about that? I thought that was great, man. And then let like, my kids, that another, you know, I'm always trying to impress my daughter. Yeah. That's a standard. Yeah, that's a standard. 13 years old, her friends. I said, you, I said, listen, that's the peer. That's me saying that. Dad, that ain't you. <laughs> so, so I had to, cause you know, she too young to have seen the show when it was out. Cause, and she was a, 
Lord bless my my kids was Martin fans. Mm. They watched Ooh. Martin back to back. I said, man, y'all ain't gonna watch Jamie Foxx show. Damn, we ain't trying to watch that shit, man. They watched Martin back to back. So I had to show up where the line came from. Man, it gave me some cool points. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I appreciate it. So you, you try you try to be a young man, or that's just no that's man. Man, for us, man. <laughs> no, man, that's on there, man. That's yeah. on all oh, that's on the house. He said he hadn't met you at the time when I huh? asked him. Have you guys met? I still haven't met him, but we okay. we reached out uh, yeah. on on Instagram, man. But yeah, man, it'd be great to you know get up. Awesome. Yeah. You spoke, spoke get about, a record, <laughs> right? Do yeah. one together. Yeah. Are you making some music, Jamie? Come back. We're always doing something. Oh. Man, we, but we don't know if we're gonna drop. Man. You know, <laughs> just let everybody. You know, man, we yeah. had not like I said, we had our time, and I'm like, oh, we had our time. Yeah. But you know, sometimes you just sit back and let it come. Let the youngsters get theirs for a yeah. minute. Right? Do you miss stand up? I still do stand up. Mm-hmm. You just haven't seen me doing stand up like uh, officially, but I was in Capri in Italy doing this charity. So I do the music and the stand up together. Mm, okay. And uh, everywhere I go, I'm always doing stand up. But I'm officially out this this fall and I'm going to do like some small, like, that's why you hear the, the, the Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all those, I've been working on my, uh, you know, impersonation. Set, so, set, yeah, yeah. So when you see my new set and it's, it's intimate, somebody, gonna, somebody might like literally like, not make it that night, they're gonna be laughing at hard. Because they're gonna be like, how you do last night, Fox? I killed. Mm. Literally. Because I got some funny motherfucking See, jokes. Guilt nigga. The, yeah, guilt <laughs> nigga. You know what I'm saying? And comedy- I thought com- you were gonna say somebody tried to run up on you. Like, oh yeah, well, they, I mean, you know what? I mean, that's out there too, you know? Yeah. I just, you know, I'm sh- no. Nah. But, uh, but, but I think comedy was getting a bad rap. I think comedy and what we do should be should be left alone. I mm-hmm. think they should let us entertain no matter what it is, no matter what we're doing. This is the arts. Yeah. And I also think with us inside the arts, we shouldn't be policing ourselves. Mm-hmm. I came out here to to hang out and smoke weed and kick it and have a good time, be you know, open with our yeah. art. And so that's why I went uh, even when I saw Dave Chappelle, I was at the Chappelle show. Mm-hmm. When the dude ran on the yeah, yeah, joint, yeah. And, and I ran on stage, I'm, I'm not gonna say how it all went down, but yeah. I just it was just surreal. Like yo, you allegedly, this is crazy, yeah, allegedly. <laughs> and then Chappelle, like, bam, kill us, nigga, bam, it's crazy, bam, bam, <laughs> kill us, nigga, it's crazy. If you ever in trouble, if you ever in trouble, James Fox has a sheriff hat, bam, pow. I was like, this nigga, this so surreal. Like what the fuck is wrong? And what happened was. The Jabberwockies, this is what threw me out. The Jabberwockies had performed in front of Dave, which I thought was weird, but it was cool. The niggas that dance? Yeah, the damn niggas. You know, <laughs> popping and shit. And I was like, okay, and I'm in the, I'm in the audience, nigga, bottle of, bottle of BSB in and shit. BSB? I'm having a good time. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got the BSB in me, you know what I'm saying? So I'm in there dancing, pop, like having a good time with them and shit, but I'm in bad seats because I got, got my tickets. In. I'm in the garden shit. You know how they had a shit in the front? I'm in the garden seats. And people are looking like, how are you back here? But I'm like, man, I have a good time. You ran from the garden to the stage? Bro, listen to me. Okay. So Chappelle finishes, thank you, right? <laughs> and then I see a nigga run. I said, oh, that must be one of the Jabberwockies. <laughs> and they about to do an interpretive dance. <laughs> this nigga tried to talk to this nigga. I said, what nigga? This nigga, bing, I'm gone. <laughs> gone. And niggas is like, what if I go gone, nigga? I'm not gonna say it all, Jago. nigga. I <laughs> said, the you arm can't... was bent backwards on the, on, it the, was? on the nose. Hell yeah, you see that nigga yeah. I didn't see that. Shit was bent <laughs> <laughs> that nigga shit was this way. I didn't see that. But I went up there to, to protect my my, yeah, my yeah. friend, my homie, and to protect comedy, man. This is yeah. these are jokes, man. Yeah. Like yeah, like right. and when I go out, I'm gonna say some shit, man. That is that has to be said mm-hmm. because it's funny, you know. As yeah. comedians, man, and as as entertainers. We just talk about life. Like, yeah. I don't care what political side you're on. I'm going to talk about Joe Biden. I'm going to talk about yeah. um, mm-hmm. Trump. I'm going to talk about everybody. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why when I go out, man, I hope people really are receptive to it. And and all the running on stage and all that. Leave, yeah. that, mm-hmm. leave that shit alone, man. Yeah. Let, let, us, let, us, let us perform for you. Because mm-hmm. there, is a, there is an unspoken contract mm-hmm. between artists and fans. Right. Thank you. That contract has been a long since Shakespeare. Mm. There's been that contract where you sit and you are entertained. Mm-hmm. So we don't want to break any more of those yeah. contracts and 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 because the world needs our entertainment, needs Snoop Song, needs yeah. my jokes, and needs day shift on Friday. Speaking of killing stages, Snoop, man, we saw what you did at the Super Bowl. How did, Ooh! <laughs> I think you went Super Bowl straight to the set, right? Shoot yeah. the movie. Mm-hmm. Wow. How did you like even narrow down what song you was gonna pick? Because there's so many to pick from. I didn't have no control over what songs I performed. Okay. Dr. Dre 
put that whole show together as far as the, the look of it, the sound of it, the who comes out first, second, third, the everything. Mm. That's a Dr. Dre production. Gotcha. Mm. I read that uh, after you performed, Jay-Z was the first one that met you? Yeah, we was in a little locker room downstairs having a uh, <clears throat> social agenda. <laughs> social agenda. <laughs> social agenda. <laughs> Well, the best halftime show ever. Yeah. Best yeah. halftime show. I was in the stand. Again, I didn't have a great seat. What's going on, Jamie? I don't know. I got to work on my connect. <laughs> but, man, it was amazing to see those guys do that, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it was amazing to see hip hop in that way mm-hmm. be, um, and not that they were ever jockeying for a position to be mainstream. Mm-hmm. It's just amazing to see how hip hop is just, no matter what color, no matter what mm-hmm. creed, people enjoy. Snoop's giving out death row chains, man. Eli Manning got one. Yep. Steph Curry got one. Who's next? Uh, I don't know. We got to see. Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx. Come on, man. Look, I'm already good. <laughs> I'm already good, man. We good. We good. We good. We good. I'm just trying to make, like I said, it's the brand right now. Mm. Yeah. See, when you see that chain on Eli Manning, Steph Curry, what do it make you think? It makes you think that death row is beautiful. It's fun. Mm-hmm. It's happy to be around. It represents life. It mm-hmm. represents love. Not the old stigma of, you could get beat up, you could get shot, you could get anything negative, you don't even have nothing to do with no more. I'm trying to put it in a different realm of life. And there's nothing negative to say about that day shift, man. Congratulations shift. again. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much, man. We're so excited about that. Uh, Netflix is super duper duper excited because it works for their platform in, in a yeah. way that's amazing. Even the they go by these the numeric systems and things. Yeah, I was gonna say, how do you compare like box office from back in the day to Well, box here office is different. It's like when you do box office, you have the ability in a, in a movie that's in the theater to allow things to play out. On the system of us watching something, when we mm-hmm. hit Dreaming. it, you yeah. know how we are in the first two minutes. Mm. First two minutes, if it ain't popping, what do you do? You turn yeah. on. Yeah. So with those movies, we with that system, we have touched all of those points. Like the first two, three minutes of this movie, boom, we, we, we cook it with gas. And then we keep, we keep the pedal on the metal. And that's why, if you think about it like this, no matter where you are in the movie, if you turn the movie on mid movie, it's something you know really great happening. So that's what they're uh, excited about. It works with the system, and at the same time, you can't miss with Snoop, you can't miss with Dave Franco, you can't miss Ooh, with Megan mm-hmm. Good, you can't miss with Megan showed out on that. Megan showed out. You know what I'm saying, up, yeah. man, way way great. And if you guys is out here in LA and y'all checking, I want you to head down Sunset Boulevard. You know why? Sunset Boulevard is is a staple of Hollywood. It's mm-hmm. the place where everybody comes to see. And uh, for a young man from Long Beach, California, and a young man from Terrell, Texas, uh, to have billboards littered down the street yeah. of Sunset Boulevard. Mm-hmm. And although we've done this for quite some time, it still feels good Maybe. to see to see those billboards up. Mm-hmm. It feels good to see you guys back at mm-hmm. it, man. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Legendary. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Thank you, guys. Sure. Jamie Foxx, Snoop Dogg. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.